the impact that Appetite had. Boom! <laughs> one of the best albums in rock history. Cracked down the entire system, changed everything, and it was f***ing perfect. Hey everybody, it's your radio pal Wes Nesman from FMX Radio in Lubbock, Texas. We're going to talk a little Guns N' Roses. Bam! The 30th anniversary of Appetite for Destruction is July 21st. Now, if you'd like to hear rock stars talk about the album, you can head over to Loudwire's YouTube channel, hear words from Slash, Chris Jericho, and others about the impact of the album. But that's where I want to start, the impact of the album. It was not a nuclear bomb going off. It debuted around 182 on the charts when it came out. Think about that. One of the best albums of all time, and it debuted below 180. That's a bomb. Now, it took about a year of heavy road work uh, and a ton of airplay, and of course, the album ultimately made it to number one. I've got my little GNR treasure trove back here, and I want to explain this right now because it can be a little distracting. This right here is actually a Guns N' Roses welcome mat. That's why it won't set really flat here. And I hate to tell you collectors this, but I actually used it as a welcome mat, so could probably use a little dry cleaning. But it is uh, original from back in the day. Also over here, the Guns N' Roses jacket that was sent out. Now fortunately, um, it was a size too small for me. So this thing is pristine. It's actually... Um, engraved in the back. They actually used pressure and push that design out. Over here we've got the original album cover which we'll get to in just a second and of course Sweet Child O' Mine, the original CD release which of course featured uh, both an edited version and a remixed version. They were confident that they were going to do whatever it took to get this on the radio. Now let's talk about the original cover to Appetite for Destruction. This is the original cover and an original promotional copy. It's worth about a hundred or so dollars right now. Um, and you kind of look at this and you go, wow, no wonder that was rejected. But evidently, Axl Rose had originally approached the label about using the picture of the, uh, the Challenger blowing up. And the label uh, said, nah, it's a little bit in poor taste. So this is the compromise. You can see a woman who's been assaulted here. Here is the person who's assaulted her, or the robot, and then taking revenge right over here. It's kind of also interesting on the album on the inside. The labels are not A and B like most albums. It's uh, G and R. I mean, they thought this marketing all the way through. Now, if you're a big fan, you can find some of these out on the internet with colored vinyl, but I think those are bootlegs from a German company. There are uh, very, very few of these still in existence. Of course, you're probably more familiar with the cross logo, the uh, Celtic cross that featured skulls that looked like each of the band members. Speaking of the band members, man, Guns N' Roses was pretty much uh, set up for success because... They were so identifiable. Okay, you've got great tunes. You've got great tunes. But as anybody in the business will tell you, sometimes that's not enough. They also had a great image. You had bad boy Axl Rose. You had uh, the guitar player who was a human Muppet. You had the other guitar player who was the shy guy. You had Duff on bass who was the pretty boy. And of course, Animal on the drums. It was like a boy band of metal. It was pretty easy to identify with the members. And uh, I tell you what, I don't think Guns N' Roses gets enough credit for killing their hair metal revolution. Um, I absolutely detested that time in our, in our music history. Uh, Guns N' Roses came out and they were a breath of fresh air. Now, a lot of people want to give credit to the grunge movement for knocking that stuff off the map. Let me put it this way. 
Guns N' Roses made those bands punch drunk. It put those bands on their heels. They are going along like this, and then grunge came along and pushed them over lightly. There was just something gritty, real, and raw about Guns N' Roses, and that's exactly what we needed at that time, and we got it with Appetite for Destruction. You guys be awesome to each other. For more GNR stories, once again, head over to Loudwire on YouTube. And of course, loudwire.com.